So kia ora koutou, welcome um, to staff induction and training. Another one in the Zoom series for EOTC coordinators. Uh, we've got a few things to get through today um, and I'll leave, uh, hopefully leave lots of time for questions um, both along the way and then at the end as well. So just normal housekeeping. Um, there's not very many of us on today, so feel free just to um, turn your mics off and, or on, sorry, and um, ask questions when we break at, the, any, at any time during the session or at the end. Um, and just uh, check in too around the National EOTC Coordinator Database. Um, any support in getting your neighboring schools um, registered on the database is, um, always really appreciated. Uh, we run it on behalf of the Ministry of Education um, and they're looking to get up to 90% of schools registered on that database. So we've got a wee ways to go on that. So any help along the way is really appreciated. Uh, this whole series has had uh, three overarching key messages um, around understanding the procedures you're using, making sure you're current and using current practice or um, if you're using uh, bespoke planning tools that they're doing the same job as the current um, set are and that you really got that check in place that everyone involved in the activity understands their role in that activity um, and they can comp competently um, perform that role. Uh, we talked a lot last time and this is um, this zoom really fits in really nicely with the last month's zoom around the competency of your staff um, and how critical that was to providing quality EOTC both around making sure uh, your policy and your procedures are implemented uh, that the risk is levels of risk are effectively managed during the activity um, that those people and uh, staff members can um, respond um, to the dynamic environments that they face when they're running the activities and they have the competency to be identifying and managing hazards during activities and also dealing with um, any emergencies that might um, crop up in a calm and considered uh, manner. So competent staff equals quality EOTC. And last time uh, we looked at uh, uh, creating a checklist or a um, spreadsheet of the activities that you do in your school and deciding on what competencies each one of those activities uh, needs. This time we're going to look at it from a staff point of view and how we go about oops, sorry, um, inducting and then training staff and also the record keeping that sits alongside that process. Um, so what happens when a new staff member arrives? Um, they'll go through an induction process at your school. Uh, is EOTC included in that induction process? Uh, is a key question to ask really important to have a standard approach or checklist um, so that everyone who is joining your staff is getting the same information, even if different people are actually doing the induction. The EOTC part of that induction process should include the policies and procedures, that those policies and procedures have been read and understood and there's been a chance for that person to ask questions and start to build their understanding. And also that there's a signed acknowledgement that they've been through that process and engaged with those documents. Um, that's really important for your record keeping, that there's a signed acknowledgement there. Induction should also include uh, emergency procedures or crisis management, and that's um, bigger than just EOTC, of course, but how EOTC fits into, into that big picture for your school. 
the steps of EOTC planning um, and that's probably included in your procedures just but making sure that the staff member understands who's the first person they need to go to and who can support them um, when they're starting to think about EOTC. Something else to include in the induction process can be driving. Um, if that staff member is going to be involved in driving, uh, whether you have a school van or they might be driving their own um, personal vehicle with students in it, uh, you can have a little process that involves jumping in the um, car or van with them and taking it around the block. Um, if they're going to be towing a trailer in their role at all, um, it's really good to make sure they know how to put that on safely. Uh, they can back it in if it's required, or at the very least, they know how to un, um, take it off the tow bar and push it in, uh, and just making a record that those things have happened. And then when it comes to their first event, making sure that there is time and support to go over each of the steps as the planning occurs. Um, and I've got a little example here of what a template might look like. Um, so this is just uh, one that we're used to use. Uh, it's got all of the kind of standard stuff that you would expect, but it also includes things that relate to EOTC. Um, and you can see signed um, both by the staff member and the person who did the induction. This copy then um, just got filed on their um, personnel file, but it fed in to a bigger picture. Um, and there's all sorts of different ways that you can keep um, your staff information. Uh, a number of student management systems now have um, staff information um, captured in there as well and uh, vary in the ability that they can be modified to capture other things as well. I mean, this is just a simple Excel sheet. Um, example and you can see um, it captures a bunch of information about the staff member um, emergency contacts etc that you need to know but also then starts to capture um, a record on that they've had induction um, that their first trip has been noted um, and they've had some induction in that first trip um, driver's license expiry date for driver's license um, if they're driving a van you've um, done some little induction around that. Same with the trailer, first aid, expiry date. Um, this is the piece where they've looked at the EOTC policies and procedures and they've signed um, that they've looked at those and understood them, they've had a chance to ask questions. And then we'll talk a little bit more about what these um, categories uh, might mean as well as we go through, but it's starting to build that big picture of record keeping and knowing your staff over time. And so ongoing training, once people have been inducted and people or staff have been there for a number of years, it's great to engage with those EOTC policies and procedures annually. There can be all sorts of levels of review and engagement with staff um, around those policies and procedures. You know, what's working well? Um, are there changes needed? But really, the key thing um, here around this ongoing training and recording is that they have read and understood and they've had that opportunity to ask questions. Um, you could do some clever little things here, you know, set up a wee quiz. Uh, make it interactive, make it automatic. Um, you know, is there a way that uh, the results um, can, can just, uh, you know, when they're ticked off as having completed the quiz, can automatically find its way um, to your staff database. Uh, the more automatic things can happen in this process, the better, obviously. And, you know, you need to hunt out that Google expert in your school that can set that system up for you. Um, there's lots of clever IT people out there just dying to get this, these little automations going. Um, and there's lots of little quiz programs like Kahoot and things that can work well to make it not seem like quite such a task. 
So chocolate fish go a long way to get people <laughs> engaged into these little tasks. Um, ongoing staff development um, can include adding EOTC into that conversation around staff development uh, for all of your staff. Um, you know, are there qualifications that the staff member um, would like to work towards or um, be supported in achieving? What sort of training is available? Um, in both qualifications that are curriculum related but also safety management related as well. So the New Zealand Certificate in EOTC Leadership at level four and five is an example. Uh, first aid is another example of a qualification that staff members might like to work towards. Or practical skills where they're um, relevant, like the bushwalking qualifications that are either New Zealand certificates or available through the Outdoor um, Instructors Association, Mazoya. Uh, mountain biking as well, all sorts of qualifications in that suite um, of qualifications. And we talked quite a lot about qualifications in the last Zoom session um, as well. And also curriculum related uh, qualifications or training, um, such as the Revisioning School Camps uh, Professional Development, uh, thinking about things that can add to both people's safety management but also their curriculum delivery in EOTC. Really important to um, record both the training and qualifications that people achieve, but also what events that staff are participating in. And then you're really starting to build uh, a really good record of people's experience and competence. So that includes um, what role they had in that activity and whether um, there's any future development needs that were identified out of that um, event and their participation in it. Uh, again, your IT person um, might have a clever way of linking um, the records uh, from your approvals, EOTC approval system, um, back into um, your staff database so that that happens automatically once um, the staff member is recorded as going on that event. It just populates um, back into that database. Yeah, that would be. Um, certainly helpful for an EOTC coordinator um, if you can get that automation happening in there. Are there any questions so far? No? So now thinking about uh, how you bring all that information together. So last session, um, we looked at this EOTC activity competence requirements spreadsheet idea uh, where you've got your activity and you've identified the competencies or qualifications that each of that each activity requires. And now you've developed a staff database. And now you can do a matching exercise when your event approvals come across your desk and you can look for, um, well, you can look that those two things match uh, and that there's no gaps. So do the staff that are listed um, on that event or for that event have the required competencies? Now, if an event is asking for X, Y, and Z, but you look at the staff, your staff database, and between the staff, they've only got X and Y, then how do you fill that gap? Um, and it's it's a really good solid process for guiding you to identify that. Um, so then you can look through your, data, your staff database and see if you can find a Z in that database, um, or do you then look for a volunteer um, in your parent body that has that skill, or go to an external provider or contractor that you can bring in to fill that gap. Um, and then long term, 
look at can you train or recruit staff that give you the um, complete picture of competencies that you need across the activities that you're doing regularly. Um, so this is just an example that we looked at last time. Um, this is very clearly outdoor focused um, EOTC act activity competence requirements. Um, but you can see how you could compare that requirement to your staff list and say, for example, if we're going kayaking at the pool, we've got a couple of staff going, one of them's got kayak one, um, they've both got their required experience, but oh, neither of them have got current first aid. You know, who can we take that's got current first aid? And there it really helps um, you make robust decisions. Uh, you can do the same thing for volunteers. Uh, so um, you can use a, the volunteers form and collect that information in and then pop it into a spreadsheet so you're not having to ask your volunteers or contractors for the same information all of the time. Uh, and also if someone hasn't volunteered necessarily for a particular activity, but you're looking to fill that gap, you've got that on record and you might be able to convince them that they are free that day after all and can come and help you. And another thing that's really good to include on your volunteer and contractors form is whether you'd use them again or not um, and any comments that you might have. This is particularly helpful when uh, the person that was organising the contractor or had the relationship with them um, or was organising the event is no longer at school or isn't really involved and you kind of forget to ask them. Um, and that just helps you avoid that situation where you repeat having the same poor experience um, again and again. Uh, so yeah, nothing worse than that I could have told you that um, from someone after you've had that poor experience. Um, so really good to get into recording that. And the same applies with your staff. Um, if you know there's some feedback from an activity uh, and clearly there's, um, there's not the strength they needed in one particular area, it is really good to keep a record of that and of course that's confidential to you um, and, but can help you build a picture of where they might need training going forward and guide you when a year down the track you're looking at staffing and going oh yeah no that wasn't great last time let's not put them in the same position again whereas it's very easy to um, forget that if you haven't actually made a little note somewhere um, a couple of places where this information and this process is um, really valuable is one um, it's great for showing the school board that there's a robust super um, system in place around deciding supervision. Um, just, I mean, they don't obviously get to see all the detail, but just that there's a system where you're making those judgments based on uh, solid information that's recorded um, is really reassuring for the board. And also, if you ever were to find yourself in the unfortunate position of an incident investigation, it's um, amazingly useful uh, to have evidence of that robust process and what you made your decisions on around staff competency and you know, the process of matching the competencies required for the activities and the competencies your staff hold um, is a really um, robust one if you're doing it in this way. Uh, far better than just saying, oh, they've always taken that activity and not actually um, having that evidence recorded. Uh, so that's the end of the information I was going to share um, with you today. So um, any questions at this stage? And then I've just got another couple of little bits to go over. I have a little question, Fiona, but it's not maybe completely relevant to this today, although it is a little bit, um, just because I'm going through it at the moment, in terms of the new vaccination mandate and ah. working with outside providers. How about um, we'll finish this and then yep. we'll have some time, eh? Because I'm sure there's more okay. than 
one question around the, um, yeah. the place we find ourselves in now. Um, yeah. Also, I've I've set up a um, from your guys's template. I've set up a Google Sheet which populates to a spreadsheet for a staff induction. So I'm happy to put that in the chat if anyone wants to rip it off and put their name on it. More than welcome. I'll I'll find it and put that in there. Oh, great! Thanks, William. Yeah, uh, the, there's so much clever stuff you can do in that IT space um, just to. Um, make your life a whole lot easier nowadays. So it really is worth chatting with those experts um, in your school. Anything else around, super, uh, around training and induction? Okay, fabulous, gonna be quick today. Uh, so just a couple of screenshots from the EONS website. Uh, up here, um, this is where you can find the latest guidance um, around COVID. Um, I'll take some COVID questions in a minute because I'm sure there's lots. Uh, and this is where you find all the EOTC safety management uh, material. Professional development tab here if you're looking for what training opportunities are out there for staff. Uh, we have both the safety management um, pathway plus um, the curriculum pathway with the revisioning school camps work um, plus really happy for you to just flip me an email at any stage and say uh, I've got these staff this is the kind of thing we're looking for because um, there's often um, bits and pieces that are going on out there that I know about. Um, if you're in the EOTC management tab um, this is where you find the Zoom series um, and a whole lot of other um, interesting things in there as well. Um, last thing on today's session was I have one more session scheduled for this year um, in November, but I've used up all of the requests that had come through. So um, if anyone's got anything in particular they would like a, a Zoom session on, um, now's your chance, uh, or email me. Too. So um, really happy for any suggestions about what that November session um, could have, what would be useful for a discussion. Oh, William's popped that um, Google link in the chat, so hopefully um, everyone can see and make a copy. Yeah. Tell me if you can't, because I sometimes have trouble with that. Yeah, thanks, William, but it, it won't let me in. It says it's only from your organisation. Uh, let me just change the settings. Yeah, and it uh, said that we needed permission. Yeah. Oh, I'll, um, I'll try and do that now. Uh, <laughs> how do I do it in forms? I know how to do it in docs. 